Welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here today with Mike. Hoy. And Patrick. Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Making his triumphant return yeah. to the Nook. And John. Um, yeah, and I'm back from a one week sickness that uh, black left plague, me I understand. Crippled, right? yeah. Uh, Surprised I survived that one. <laughs> so when, when lancing the babules, you know, when lancing the 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 the, the um, boil, not boils, uh, where the Pustules. the boob the boobles. That's what they call it because that's a boobles. bubonic plague. So it's boobles. Wow. Something like that. Okay, or, right. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, so when lancing that, like, did you did you clean that out with was it hydrogen peroxide or alcohol? Silver. Uh, Yes. Colloidal silver. <laughs> colloidal silver. Yeah, well, they're adventuring on that. You I did. I did actually take colloidal silver while I was sick. Essential I don't know oils. how much it helped, but um, yeah, I had a fever of like 103. Wow. Uncontrollable shivering that, that's while the burning kind of up. That makes your spine sure. feel like it's been ripped out. <laughs> yeah. Again, you know, like, uh, yeah. I don't have vaccines, man. <laughs> Speaking of uh, colloidal silver, they're using that on the space station. Really? Yeah, they're having like problems with like ba- viruses and bacteria because you know it's kind of a really if you think about like the situation they're in, it's really kind of gross. You know what I mean? Like I mean, you can bathe and all that sort of Ship stuff. Ship life, man. Well, it's <laughs> you know it's it's a tin can that's in and space, you got, so you there's don't no have gravity to yeah. well, assist stage you. In Hollywood. <laughs> well, moon landing, another episode. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, um, so that's kind of that's kind of cool. They're 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 doing that because they're just like, well, so all this stuff that you know they're giving us for you know infections and stuff isn't doing it really that well. So let's try colloidal silver. So yeah, mm-hmm. if, if anybody's ever like, hey, colloidal silver doesn't work, it's like, well, they're using it on the space station, it's, it's so. In, it's endorsed by NASA. Yeah, it's endorsed <laughs> by NASA. Colloidal <laughs> silver, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, to provide links to that one. I can do that, yeah. Okay. I can do that, yeah. We'll try to remember to put them in the show notes. Mm, oh, well. But we'll also try to remember to do the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll also try to remember to do show notes, because... NASA's at work removing all traces of them. Uh, <laughs> I know, right now they're just like, oh, shit, well, got to find that Wikipedia article and delete that. God damn. Can't uh, let, can't let uh, Johnson and & Johnson and, and, and crew get mad at NASA, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what are you drinking tonight, Mike? Oh, I am drinking... Uh, Seasonal Oktoberfest. Uh, nice. Dead Ringer by Ballast Point uh, Brewing down in San Diego. So it's uh, Ballast Point's really good. Ballast Point does a good job on coming up with like specialty stuff. The, They're the, good with liquor too. I like their. Oh yeah, they they made a rum. Yeah. They got a rum yeah. and vodka and a whiskey. They're doing vodka. All too? three of them are really good. Oh no way. Yeah, so Dead Ringer Oktoberfest Ballast Point Brewing down there in San Diego. Endorse our show. We'll put ads up, I swear. <laughs> yeah, it's really good, actually. Delicious. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like Oktoberfest. So tonight, we're going to be talking about thick versus thin libertarianism. And for those of you who don't know, basically... Yes, Steve, what the hell is that? I've never heard of that, ever. <laughs> really. Really? I mean, before you mentioned it, what was it, like last month or something, you're like, oh, we should do the show on this. I'm like, what, what thick versus thin? What is that? And yeah. Well, it came to mind because there was a debate recently between Walter Block and... Uh, Bowtie. No. no um, not Tucker. I want to say Robert... Um, not yet. Shulman? I can't think of his name right now. <laughs> Show but he, notes. He's, he's, he's on uh, C4SS, though. He okay. worked, he, he's heavy on C4SS. Mm-hmm. Well, Co-founder, I think, or something. Long? No. Yes. Robert, Robert Long. Yeah, yeah okay, Robert, Robert Long. Long. Okay. Yeah. So, um, which got me thinking about it again. But basically, the the idea is with thin libertarianism it's non-aggression principle and that's it Um, maybe maybe you have property rights thrown in if you don't uh, if you don't consider that under the non-aggression principle 
but it's the idea that libertarianism, qua libertarianism, is focused solely on violations of the non-aggression principle, and that's it. Whereas thick libertarianism says to achieve liberty, we need more than the non-aggression principle. Things like... We need aggression? No. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> no, more principles besides oh. that. Okay. Like, for instance, like, like I, thick libertarianism, you can have all kinds of different shades, though commonly you have the left-right divide, such like what you guys talked about last week. Right. And I, I tend to think that libertarianism should, or I guess maybe individualist anarchism, voluntaryism, uh, it, it should be more of a focus on individualism, the, the principles of individualism. So things, when, when you're dealing strictly with the non-aggression principle, you can still get instances of cultural racism, sexism, that kind of thing. Whereas if you bring in the, the elements of individualism, individualism focuses on the individual. So you can't have people as, as uh, within individualism, you can't focus on race anymore because you're focused on the individual rather than with groups uh, as opposed to collectivism where you can have racism fascism statism that kind of thing that's uh, that's a really good point to drill on that um, um, collectivism isn't just uh, communism and socialism and whatnot it's uh, it, it takes various forms. You, you've got, uh, yeah, ra racism is a damn good way to put it. You're, you're, you're assuming uh, certain personality traits, attributes, uh, and whatnot to a people of a certain skin color or, or facial features, et cetera. Ethnicity. Ethnicity, yeah, that's yeah. probably a better general term for it. Or a belief in an invisible man. <laughs> it, you know, yeah. You know. And so you're, you're attributing that all to, all to a certain group of people just based on, 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 their, on their appearance. But if you do that, then you're just getting sucked into the same sort of mentality of of your 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 fascism, your communism, your 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 normal um, you must live for the state sort of thing. It it, it really runs along the same sort of line. It, it's it's assuming things about a a group of people simply because of you know really some dumb superficial shit. And you know I mean that that's been a line that's been used by governments forever. Is just hey those guys on the other side of that invisible line that we have they're they're different. They're different. Oh, so you mean those Macedonians are really a lot different from those Greeks? Oh, yeah, those Macedonians are totally fucking different. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean the, almost I, exactly the, the identical, you know, uh, heritage, gods, all that sort of stuff, you know, going way back to, you know, B.C. so-and-so. Dr. Yeah. Seuss has a great book about this. Are you talking um, about the stars and the not stars? What was that The Ukes and the Souks. Uh, I can't remember the name of the book, but they animated it, and uh, it dealt with an arms race between two different people, mm. races of people I've that built that the wall. One. Because I read and the, that the one. divide happened because this side of the wall, everyone buttered their bread on the, t the top side, yeah, and okay. the other side of the wall, everyone buttered their bread on the other, the underside of the bread, uh -huh. and so it started an arms race between the two, where each side was developing bigger and bigger weapons. Um, you know, to protect from the evildoers buttering their bread on the improper side. <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, so that, that this is clearly a moral argument. You know, I, I came out from all of these views from from the deep left. Um, right. You know, uh, I, I was trying to be organized uh, in college. Um, you know, I wanted desperately to revive SDS. I mean, you know, this this was a real fight for me. Mm -hmm. And we were just having a 
great discussion about this very issue inside about, well, you know, you can't really make anybody not be racist and except by force, as far as I can tell. You know, well, you, you, I, well, so you, you can educate them. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I, 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 am, I, I feel like I'm contributing to the fight against uh, racism, classism, elitism, um, by having children and raising them in a way where they're, I, I was going to say not exposed to, but that's the wrong thing because they're going to be exposed to it anyway. Right. But where they're, where, yeah, where they're vigilant of it. <laughs> yeah, inoculate them. Yeah, right? <laughs> inoculate them. But, um, yeah, no, I, 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 that's, that's, that's what I always come back on. I'm like, well, if the state's going to exist, like, what other reason could it possibly exist for except to help the people that, you know, who are marginalized, that can't help themselves? You know, what other reason could it possibly exist for, a legitimate reason? And um, the answer is that is always the banner of the state, is that we're going to fix these injustices uh, that they are doing to you because uh, they want you to butter your bread on the bottom side. I mean, you know... <laughs> And, and, and that's what I come down to as much as I feel total hands tied by this. But you can't make somebody believe something, mm-hmm. you know. Um, all you can do is maybe point out to them that their beliefs are a little bit absurd. Um, you know, uh, an author that I've read a lot of that talks about something in American history that I thought was interesting was American Congregationalism. And this was, you know, the history of the church, the Puritans, essentially, mm-hmm. okay. in America and how it evolved, you know. Clearly, they did some really scary things in Salem <laughs> right. with the witches. But um, once you got about 100 years out from that, and it did take 100 years um, or more, um, yeah, they weeded out people from their society that didn't conform. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it was everyone together talking about what conformity was about. I um, swear I saw Sally boiling frogs in the middle of the night. It was a full well, room, yeah. It sure. Was really talk to her about that in public, yeah. But um, <laughs> they, you know, it, it took them a hundred years to stop burning people at the stake, you know, for being different. Which is um, tragic, yeah. Right. So it was a hundred years of terror, but you know, once they finally reached that point, and it's sad that we have to keep going through these same, you know, motions um, in our society. But once they finally reached that point, they were really pretty, pretty good deal. They were very allowing. They were very um, open. Um, you know, if you wanted to be Quaker, go ahead, be Quaker, that's cool, whatever, you know, but a hundred years before, a Quaker was the same as witch, you know, that was a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to wait a hundred years, but I, the only way I found to fight this thing is with my Generationally. kids. Generationally? You know, um, yeah. I teach art, um, now, so I'm teaching art to children. I am a terrorist, in fact, now, because <laughs> I am teaching them not to be blind consumers, um, that's my favorite class that I teach is pop art and marketing. Nice. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I don't know how else do you fight it. Yeah, I don't, can I be a member of a party that will fight this thing? I don't think so. I don't think being a thick or a thin, I don't, maybe I need to understand more about it. But uh, Well, I think, I think where this is concerned, the thin libertarian would say, you can be concerned with that, that's fine. Just it just has nothing to do with libertarianism because it ha- it's not a part of the non-aggression principle. Right. Whereas a thick libertarian would say it's necessary for bringing about freedom, and so it does fall under the libertarian. libertarian I, I definitely umbrella. understand that perspective. Yeah, I, I, I agree I with that because I can see how the potential for... Uh, power to a mass, or uh, in this case, even money to a mass. If there's nothing other outside of the non-aggression principle, then it's, if there's nothing philosophically grounding people, then I could see where uh, thin libertarianism, if you will, could lead to a circumstance where there's a power differential. And with that power, we know whether it's political, whether it's financial, whatever, that they're in lies the seeds to corruption and uh, so I, I think there needs to be some other principles uh, philosophical aspects that ground people bring them together a collectivist uh, uh, idea here and I'm not saying it a political collectivism because I could identify with an individualist anarchist I ident- identify as a volunteerist but when we look at the Asian cultures as an example, we can see that there are certain things that they do 
better than the eastern than the western cultures right they tend to take better care of their elderly mm -hmm. their elderly are included um and certainly they have been wooed into the consumerist monster uh, if you will, but there's still some elements there uh, culturally that we can see that they do very well and that we would do well to incorporate them. So the answer isn't the East, the answer isn't the West, the answer isn't total individualism at the expense of people who identify in a group, mm -hmm. the elderly, the youth, the, right. the, the people, you know, groups of people that, we, that do exist. But I think you still need community, you still need society. Right. 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 I don't I think I think you can still have that under the individualist I, uh, I think mindset though. Mature individuals would not discard their their young and their elderly, right? You know, I think uh we're filling our lives probably with a bunch of shiny shit cuz it's pretty We've been, Pretty barren, right? <laughs> We've been infantilized by right. the marketing agenda. So well, I mean, that's, my, power that's my power animal is a crow. Anything that's shiny, I apparently need and, and treasure and, and put it in a little hole in the tree somewhere. So There you go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's apparently what I do. Anything that's shiny, you know, I like it. But. Well, like we were looking at earlier, apparently there's, there's some guys are bringing to market. It's not out yet, yet but it's a remote control... R2-D2 beer fridge. Need. One. Shut yeah, up and right? take my money. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I want shit. that. Apparently very, the most important thing in my life right now. It's a necessity for me. You know. Yet another thing I didn't know I needed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, until somebody presented that to me, it was not, you know, a priority. Now it is. Um, but well, I, it was fine until I opened up that Gimpler's catalog and it told me all <laughs> kinds of shit I needed. And I <laughs> God damn. Do you guys remember the sharper image? Yeah. You'd yes. walk in there and you'd be like, I need that hat that has a mister on it. Of course I do. <laughs> it's hot outside. Wait till you get a hold of the Adam and Eve catalog. Ooh. <laughs> well, God damn. <laughs> uh, so Maybe we should do a show on minimalism. <laughs> in the future, yes. My wife and I are striving to be minimalist. She's much better at it than I am. Mm -hmm. God, she's ruthless. She just throws my shit away all the time. <laughs> so, so wait, wait, wait. my toys. Well, so it, so she's gonna throw it away your shit. No, 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 she's gonna no. throw it away her shit too. She doesn't You're even have camera. anything. No, she, doesn't camera. Have anything. she doesn't even have anything. That okay. Is, so that's why she's even touching my stuff is because she's always already thoroughly minimalized her gear. Mm. And now she's got to start getting all into this mine. space taken up by your shit. She's just like this is all gotta go. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it's a disease because like I look at it, I go, I go, I don't need any of this stuff but i'm scared to actually touch it because then i go i spent money on this this is important yeah. to me you know someday it may go on my c3po talking coat rack <laughs> you know, right, I, I need right. this you know this pea coat that i bought at ross you know like really you well know? is there a possibility Ten that it, that it could be useful for in the there may be a pole though. shift and Temecula or right. whatever may be really fucking cold in the future. It could right? be. It could be. <laughs> I mean, there's a possibility that certain things are useful in the future. Like, I mean, I'm not going to say that I'm a hoarder because, I mean, I do throw shit away, I guess. But, <laughs> you know, I mean, certain, certain things may be useful in the future. So there, there's, there, there's that to say. Yeah. Well, I got a lot of stuff. That I've been in the process of moving and stuff like that recently. So I've been trying to throw a lot of stuff away. Or get rid of a lot of stuff. Yeah, donate so, it. Donate it first. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't throw um, it away. And and there's some stuff that's like, I can't get rid of this because it's collector's item and I can't just mm -hmm. donate it and I can't sell it. I could go on eBay or something with it, so it may it's sitting in a garage still. But In the back of your head, there's a little voice saying, this may be worth more money in the future. It's not going to, though. It's baseball cards. You never know. You want to know, the, what, you want to know what really got The me? bottom has... It's fallen out of baseball cards. Oh, yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe. But you want to know what got me the other day? 10, 15 years ago, those things were worth like several hundred dollars. Today, I'd be lucky to get a hundred. So just done? They're yeah. Baseball cards are like, worth a damn? What did uh, baseball cards then? Like 10, 15 years ago. Well, what did it though? Like oh, why all of a sudden? I don't know. I don't know, probably the digital age. Documentary, have all we my, need to know uh, why. Yeah. <laughs> What's the story? I have my Kirby Puckett card. card collection. He was he was my guy. My my rookie card at one time was worth $800. Damn. Yeah. I had a little brother. I think it's worth 50 who, now. 
who was on my wow. nerves. So I, I went and got his, uh, this was 1987 or 88, 87, 88, George Bush. Uh, <laughs> I have a George so, Bush trading uh, card from, what? from 19. So I, my little brother was bothering me, so I took Remember the, the I had, Shield Desert Storm yeah, card. Yeah, I had I those had, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I had uh, tongs, and I went through his cars. Oh, ho, Jose Canseco. Yeah. And I got the tongs, and I held them over the gas stove, and he's, you know, and oh, he saw the card start oh, to wilt. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's Jose Canseco, 1988. So I don't yeah, know what that yeah. means. <laughs> my little brother was just going crazy. I, I wasn't burning Jose Canseco. I was burning some shitbird. I don't even yeah. know his name or whatever. But, yeah, that's <laughs> but, but, but it was just you have to put the stress on right? just yeah. like, ooh, Jose Canseco. <laughs> yeah. when, when I was a kid, I had Jerry Rice's rookie card. And my two-year-old brother discovered scissors. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was man. worth 50 bucks at the time, and it's probably worth maybe 50 bucks now. But <laughs> there was a time where it was worth more than that. <laughs> mm-hmm. There was a time when we were free. Segway. <laughs> Segway uh, to pick up yeah, back, on... Back on topic. So... Thick and thin. Is, is it... So we're, we're talking about, like, you know, things that are that are worth something because because maybe the market has determined it to be, right? You know, the baseball cards that were at one point worth something, and they work with me. I'm trying it's to... Go, <laughs> I'm oh, trying to it's government manipulation. <laughs> I know it somewhere. Yeah, but, you know, uh, but... Uh, so, uh, we were, we were. I was kind of like harping on 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 Tom race Brady a little effect. bit. <laughs> <The> Tom Brady effect. <laughs> I was kind of harping on race a little bit when it, when it's coming to collectivism. But that's not that's not just the only thing. You know, there there there's there's immigration on the other side of that too. It's just that it's not necessarily that there's a different race on the other side of that invisible line. That it's just simply they have a different flag and they. They they call their president a prime minister instead, or butter or, their bread on the wrong side. Yeah, butter their bread <laughs> on the wrong side. You know, so I'm really glad you brought that up. That's a, you know, uh, kids' books sometimes are fucking just brilliant when it comes to that sort of stuff. Just drawing that out. And, they worship uh, a different sky daddy. Mm-hmm. I want to be make it clear. I'm not talking about like political collectivism, and, and I don't even know that there's the what vocabulary exists. And, differentiate now but i'm simply talking about how we take care of our own too you know what i mean like right the, okay right, yeah. the, uh-huh. our elderly and our, our young and and uh it's not the, the individual is like the 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 smallest point you know like that we're if mm-hmm. rights exist it has to it has to exist at the individual level if that's you know uh and carried out from there I'm simply saying and that uh, we're not so individual centric that we lose sight of our fellow humans right, right. that we're all connected and that uh, that's the collectivism I'm kind of I'm talking about not by some policy or some uh, something like that maybe fractals could be a, a good example maybe that that you know that, that there are individual parts of this pattern but the the more individual parts form this larger, you know, sphere of, of influence on the, the rest of the whole, you know, so, yeah, yeah you know, I don't you, know, you I, I think you can get into uh, negative cultural right. cons- um, collectivism that way, though. Right. Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, totally that's again, what I see. Again, it, uh, it's good to take care of your elderly and your children and, and those that, that uh, can't get along. Um, but it's a fine line between that and tribalism, right. racism, that kind of thing. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, no, it's... Uh, okay. So you still have to have that idea of the individual Absolutely. is paramount. Absolutely. Individual While part taking of, uh, care of others that are close to you. Individuals being part of a, of a, of a, of a whole sort of a thing that, 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 that individual people make up a society... Not necessarily that the society is made up of individuals. You know what I'm saying? Like to to look to to start at the individual and bring it out, rather than to say that the society is made up of individuals. Individuals make up a society. That 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 there's collectivism comes in language too. You know that the way we speak about things, people Absolutely. say. You know, uh, I, 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 I the when, United when, States bombed 
Syria today. Yeah, or no, we they did? didn't. So we did. No, I'm just saying, no. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're kind of you're trying to elaborate a little bit more, not keeping it on the you know political side of things. But that was an easy out for me to just say like you know we you know people say we bombed Iraq yeah, right, or right, right. or you know we uh, you know stormed the beaches of Normandy. I don't I didn't get a call in the middle of the night saying that any French needed reinforcement. You know I wasn't alive <laughs> at the time. You know so yeah. It, but didn't we sign a social contract? <laughs> did. I didn't sign shit. I didn't sign <laughs> if, shit. I, if I did, I must have been like well below the age of actually being able to consent to a damn thing. You know? You so. mean you, no, your great, 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 great grandfather. We're, you're it. bound by your. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we were bound. A grandfather by seven generations by ago that, and that signed, signed it. And you're bound by what, his signature, right? How does that work? It does. <laughs> It doesn't. You Keyword inherited his doesn't. slavery. <laughs> uh, that's my thing. If you're talking about thick and thin, it's like, what is the end game for thick? I mean, it's it's great to have ideals, but you can't make people not be stupid. You know, that's mm-hmm. the thing. It's like, no, how do you make yeah. somebody not be stupid? You know, it's like, yes, racism is stupid. Yes, believing that uh, my invisible man in the sky is superior to your invisible man in the sky is really dumb. But how do you make somebody not do that? Or at the very least, maybe they don't have to change their belief, but how do you make them not affect other people with it? You know, that, that's, that's the non-aggression principle to me is that whole, you know, your freedom ends at my nose type thing. But I don't, I don't understand, like, how, how can you, aside from... Social pressure? Uh, shame, shame-based. Yeah, yeah. ostracized. Sure, but, you know... There's a South Park episode on this last week. All that it, all oh, that it takes, hilarious. you know, to generate all that it takes to generate force though is consensus because even like if you have a society that doesn't want to take care of their elders, in fact when they turn a certain age, they send them packing out into the wilderness. I mean, that's send, like send them a free death on sentence, a, you know. Send, send them free on an ice floe. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so that, I mean like sure, okay, well they're not directly killing them, but they're killing them, you know. And, and what what are you going to do? Go in and take them over? I mean, that's that's where I'm, like, sort of lost in the philosophical argument. It's like, yeah, that's a horrible thing. And should you stand up and fight for it? I don't know. Maybe you should. If it was my grandpa they were kicking out onto the ice floe, you best believe. But, you know. That's, that's the idea behind thick libertarianism, though, is that we need these other these other principles to round us out so that something like that doesn't occur in a free society so, to, so that we don't, you know, backslide or whatever back into statism or some other kind of, uh, some kind of system of control. It's so easy to manipulate people because knowledge is so occulted. I mean, I've looked into, for years, I, I've been toying with the idea of, should I become a pastor and start a megachurch? Because I'd be great at it. I know the Bible <laughs> inside and out, you know should I do that? You know, because it is, it's a formula, you know, it's, it's really a formula and you can use cheap parlor tricks. I, I don't want to just defame Christianity here, but there is a, a phenomenon going we on right now. talking about the book of Eli earlier, the line you right. said. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. The book of Eli with Denzel Washington, uh, Gary Oldman plays a great villain in that movie and he's trying to find the Bible. He's got his thugs out looking for the Bible. All mm. books are scarce now because uh, right. of some unknown cataclysm that's happened. And they said, what's so special about this book? He says, you don't understand. It's not a book. It is a weapon aimed at the hearts and minds of the desperate. And oh, wow. that, I, hmm. that is truly like, and you can insert Bible, Quran, uh, Torah. Uh, I'm going to butcher this pronunciation. Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Uh, you, you throw them all in there and used in the right way. That's what they are. So, I mean, it's so, you will always be fighting that statism. You will always be fighting that accumulation of power simply because generating consensus, you know, it's not a trick pulled by Bernays. This is a trick that's been pulled for thousands of years, you know, since human civilization has existed. So how do you ever stop fighting that? I mean, the only way is to free knowledge, I suppose. But nobody's going to do that anytime soon. Well, so if you have if you have <laughs> the internet's your... gone a long way towards yeah, yeah, it has. But if you get too free on the internet, they throw your ass in prison too, just like they did to Schwartz or what whatever his name was. Mm, Ross yeah. Albert? No, he's well, you're probably talking about him too. I'm talking Schwartz. about yeah, uh, the, the guy he that... killed himself though. Schwartz did. 
Well, yeah, yeah. yeah just, killed yeah. himself or killed himself? Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, I do think he may he may have actually. Yeah, I, I think he did. It, uh, yeah. 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 But the, so I'm wondering. So with your with your with your mega church and you know and and you know mm-hmm. you you being able to decide on what's the proper etiquette for being in this church. Do you think it would be like a a, a thick libertarian thing to do to say that it would be okay to have you know some sort of like sexual relations? Are we with, talking about Church of the with, Android with an Android? <laughs> church of the Android would it be okay to have <laughs> sex. Right. Hold on, guys. Of, damn Hold it. on. We're out of time. It. Damn it. Oh man. <laughs> Again. We'll, we'll get to it another time. Church of the Promise. Android. If you church like of the Android. Donate. Let's work on our holy if symbol you would for like that. To right. Donate to my Church of the Android. <laughs> <laughs> We accept Bitcoin. On that note, we'll accept Bitcoin <laughs> for the night. Church of the Android. <laughs>